I swear by my batteries and the Victron Multi Plus that I'm going to build an arc. And all my batteries of the battery shelf will go into this arc. And then I'm driving to the island here in the Pacific where the sun shines for 24 hours a day. 365 days a year. I'm not doing this shit weather anymore here. Down to 9% state of charge with my battery here. There's nothing coming in. It's 150 watts from the roof now. It is insane. Look at this. I'm wearing a long sleeve jumper. Have you ever seen me wearing one of these? Exactly. Well guys, in today's video, we want to do some extensive testing on these batteries here, battery 1.0. If you haven't seen the first part of this video, I'll link it down below and at the end of this video here. This is my first battery consisting of three different deliveries from Shenzhen Basin. I ordered these batteries two years ago, but we already scanned the QR code with the amazing tool with the amazing lithium iron phosphate QR code scanner decoder Roman program for all of us. I link this app for Android phones down below as well. And I've put all this information into the spreadsheet here and we could see that these battery cells were already two years old when I got them delivered. So they were sold to me as new A grade batteries as they always do on Ali. And we know they are certainly not A-grade batteries. They are not certified. They are at best storage-grade quality cells. So let's see what we can find out here. But I think I will really wait until tomorrow because it is so cold in the garage here today. It's raining and we have only 10 degrees. I'll go back inside where the fireplace runs. And I will start this testing tomorrow when it is a bit warmer here. The next day. Calibration. Everything is zero. Okay, let's measure cell number one. Point 0.17 milliohms. Point 0.17. Point 0.17. Point 0.17. So that's a good result. The first four cells have the same internal resistance. And I'll, um, I'll, measure, I'll measure all the other cells as well and show you the result afterwards. So I have now added all the results into the spreadsheet and we can see we've got a spread from 0.15 milliohms to 0.17 as the maximum. So very close together, nothing to see here. And I'm using this internal resistance tester here, which uh, uses a one kilohertz AC signal to measure the internal resistance of batteries. I'll uh, put the link down below if you're interested in buying one of these testers. So I have now prepared our first test setup here with a 4S configured battery, 12 volt. And we are using the JKBMS 4S8S version we have tested before. And let's see, we're doing a full high amperage test again with the JK BMS. And as you know from the first preview and the first testing we did with this BMS, one of the MOSFETs actually shit itself. And it's running only on 19 MOSFETs for charging, dis discharging. 19 discharging MOSFETs and the regular 20 charging MOSFETs. So let's see what it does this time. Um, we will mainly test the batteries here, but um, it is a good test for the JK BMS as well. And I want to show you something because someone has asked recently, yes, you can have as many JK BMSs as you like. They all will show up in this list here on your mobile phone and you just select the one you want to connect to. First one is our 16S JK BMS here in the battery shelf. And the second one is the 8S 200 amp BMS we want to connect to. It beeps and now we are connected to this one BMS. Okay, I've already connected our charger to it, uh, charging to 14.4 volts, 21 amps, and go for it. We'll leave this running, we fully charge this battery here, and then we do a full load test on these batteries and see how much the voltage actually zags. Because this was the test um, the SunFind Kit team did on their YouTube channel, and they said, well, these fake crate a cell batteries they drop in voltage a lot 
in comparison to real A-grade certified automotive grade battery cells they tested at the same time with the same tester. And I have never seen these batteries here dropping in voltage. Even we put 200, 250 amps on them. They, they always worked quite well and I've never seen such a voltage drop. But we'll do the test again here. I know what to look for now. Let's see how it goes. So in this freezing morning, we also want to do our high amperage uh, discharge test of these battery cells as a string and want to see how much the voltage actually breaks in during load. So this should be a corresponding test to what SFK has done on their YouTube channel. Put a 250 watt load on the battery cells and we could see how the voltage actually broke in. Um, I've got the screenshot here. So this was the good cell they were talking about. Uh, 250 watts, the voltage went down from 3.3 volts to 2.7 volts only, 91.6 amps they were pulling, and the internal resistance was 30 milliohms, which I thought is far too high as internal resistance, but I'll talk about this in a second. And because we have four cells here, we will put a 1000 watt load on these batteries here, so 250 watts each. And we will roughly see around 100 amps going out of this battery. And I've got the mobile phone already connected to the JK BMS, so we can read all the cell voltages. And I want to do, I want to be fair, I want to do um, three different or even four different tests here. This battery is now 100% charged or 3.5 six volts it was yesterday fully balanced this battery bank is around 70 percent charged and this battery bank is about 40 percent charged and i want to do the same test with the same load on these two battery banks as well without fully charging them because i'm not sure if these cells they were testing at sfk were fully charged they were saying they were not fully charged so and i think this is why the voltage broke in so much and then in the second test they did, they also tested the bad cell with 250 watts and the voltage went down to 1 volts only, 1 volts at 204 amps. And the internal resistance was 5 milliohms still, which I think far too high. And then in a the third test, they reduced the load on this bad cell to 125 watts only, which pulled around 48 amps and the voltage stayed at 2.58 volts. So all these numbers are far too low because if we would have one of these bad cells here in our pack, the BMS would have just turned off, right? 50 amps or even 200 amps and we going under 2.5 volts, the BMS would have shut down. And I think the main problem with their test setup was they did not connect the voltage cables directly to the battery. They measured the voltage of the battery cells in the tester itself and at 200 amps you will have a significant voltage drop even using a 2 gauge wire and a 175 amp Anderson connector. But the voltage sense was definitely not connected which I would have done in a test. Because this is, this is basically how I run my tests here. We've got the big clamp here for the amps and the thin cable going just directly to the terminal of the battery measures the voltage. So it doesn't matter how much voltage drop we have on these cables to charge or discharge the battery here. We always measure the voltage correctly directly at the terminals here. And I think this is exactly what they ha should have done as well in their testing. So maybe they can repeat it with the voltage sense and see if the outcome is the same. I don't know. Anyway, without further to do, let's get started. Okay, so I'm turning on the Peter inverter, which should um, wake up the Tesla 5 amps for now. Okay, so 3.3 volts we have in our cells. Car is charging with 5 amps, which should be around 1.1 kilowatts. Yep, that's what the Peter inverter says. And we can see this also here in the JK BMS actually, so we don't need a Peter inverter for that. So this is 90 amps at 1100 watts and this is corresponding to the second test they did with the 125 watts per cell. This is close to 100 amps now from the battery. 
and we can see the cell voltage has dropped to 3.24 volts but as I said it is a hundred percent charged battery so the voltage is a bit higher but everything seems to be fine so I'm cranking up the car now a bit to 6 amps let's pull a bit more power here which is 115 amps 1.5 kilowatts we are pulling and you need to divide this by four right because we've got four cells so this would now be 380 watts per cell already and we cannot see a major break in here in the in the voltage apart from cell number four but um, this could be a bus bar connection problem uh, let me just adjust this bus bar here a bit there's an aluminium bus bar connected <laughs> don't use aluminium bus bars okay let's see yeah now it's fixed 3.2 volts again so this is just a connection problem so and here you can see um, my battery cells actually performing better than the SFK grade A battery they have shown in their test but again I think it is because they haven't used the voltage sense and measured the voltage only inside the tester but not directly at the terminals of the battery and um, we go one higher here now the Peter inverter turns on the fan and we are now charging 1.75 kilowatts this is already 440 watts per cell now what I'm pulling from this pack 137 and so go one higher this is the maximum I can charge the vehicle with with this adapter here it's 160 amps 2 kilowatts so we now have around 500 watts per cell here and the voltage is still stable at 3.2 volts 3.18 3.16 but again this could be connection issues I have not talked any of these terminals here but nothing gets warm so far everything seems to be good so here with a fully charged battery now we cannot confirm such a voltage drop in these battery cells so they exceeding actually the test conditions SFK has shown in their video and I was and I was I was really curious because the voltage drop was so significant in their test I said I have never seen this in my cells and I'm running far higher far higher loads on my battery cells not only 250 watts but double that 500 watts per cell max 2 kilowatts as we can see here in the BMS so and with pulling 2 kilowatts from this battery here I want to measure the internal resistance as well of each of the cells and compare this with their test results they have presented because I think their result is far too high so uh, okay cell number one yeah it will change of course now because we have a DC ripple so we are not pulling constant DC current from this battery so the internal resistance will change a lot let's say we've got 0.2 milliohms right okay cell number two uh, I've got 0.3 milliohms cell number three 0.2 milliohms and oh, the cable is too short and cell number four is 0 0.3, 0 0.4. Yeah, I'm measuring through the aluminium bus bar. So, so, and this is how it should be. This is the internal resistance under load now, but not as in their test, 30 milliohms. Okay, so far this testing here. So I would say, well, this test worked just fine and all these battery cells are 100% certified A-grade batteries from their behavior, no voltage drop. 
absolutely fine. Top. Okay, then uh, let's connect the JKBMS to our next set of batteries here and repeat the test and see how much they break in if we discharge them with 160 amps as well and 500 watts. Okay, so we have now connected the JKBMS to our second battery bank. Um, around 70-75% state of charge. You can see the voltage uh, just under 3.3 volts here. And let's start charging the vehicle. So we are putting a load of 1.1 kilowatts on the battery. So charging is ramping up. 91-92 amps coming from the battery. And voltage drop is insignificant. Yeah, okay. Let's go all the way up to 8 amps in the Tesla. Just 2 kilowatts from the battery. And the voltage drop is 3.1, just under 3.2 volts. Again, cell number 4 could be a bit higher because of the aluminium bus bar and the connection issues oxidation but everything else seems to be good all right let's measure the internal resistance here as well 0 0.2 milliohms 0 0.2 milliohms 0 0.2 milliohms and 0 0.2 milliohms as well and again here we're pulling 500 watts from each of the battery cells which is in total then two kilowatts and you can see the voltage drop only 0.1 volts or so nothing to see here 160 amps from this battery just fine the cells performing absolutely fine all right let's test this battery here with about 40 percent state of charge all right, and this is now our battery bank with around 40% state of charge. Could be 35 or 30, I'm not sure. Let's say 40%, JKBMS, PEDO inverter. Okay, let's start with the one kilowatt test first. That's around 100 amps. From this battery, it's ramping up. 91 amps and 3.2 volts we are still on all battery cells okay let's ramp it up to 8 amps vehicle charging 160 amps from the battery 2 kilowatts and again the the voltage drops to 3.18 volts 3.17 3.15 we can see but nothing as traumatic as they have shown in their video so, I don't know. Let's measure the internal resistance here as well. And you will see it jumping up and down because of the DC ripple we have. So let's say 0.2 milliohms, right? This is the maximum we can see, 0.23 milliohms. And battery cell number two. Here again, 0.2 milliohms. 0.2 milliohms maximum, 0.2 milliohms, 0.3, but I'm measuring through the aluminium bus bar in this case. Yeah, very consistent, very consistent. Well guys, as you have seen, we have done exactly the same testing here and have actually doubled the power on these battery cells to 500 watts and they are not breaking in with the voltage as we have seen in the SFK test video. So I'm really sure the test setup was not optimal and the tester took all the information from itself, not measuring directly at the terminals because of the missing voltage sense cables. Now you wanna see the second battery bank with cell number five, six and seven and eight as well, right? Well, me too. And in the final test, we wanna see how the Vancouver delivery is performing because this was the battery pack which has always caused trouble in the battery 1.0 cell number five was fine six especially six seven and eight were always weak and i have connected everything jkbms is there the peter is there 
let's turn on the car and see how it performs with two kilowatt of load. So we are pulling 1.1 kilowatts to start with and let's have a look at the cell voltages here number one cell number one yeah this is cell number five which should be at around 30 percent state of charge this is our lowest state of charge cell which will show the lowest voltage but still here at almost 100 100 amps okay let's ramp up the load two kilowatts two kilowatts from the battery and everything is fine look at this No problem at all. And also here, let's measure the internal resistance under load. 0.2 milliohms, same 0.2 milliohms. Ah, no contact. Hang on. And again, 0.2, same 0.2. Yeah, guys, I don't know. I mean, you cannot really tell that there's anything wrong with these batteries so far with these test conditions here this is of course not as eve test the batteries because they do full cycle capacity tests and then measure the voltage and internal resistance right afterwards then after 60 seconds and after six hours or something like this and this is only one criteria to make the battery fail or pass these tests but here are these storage grade batteries even they all have different manufacturer dates here and seem to be totally random battery cells they seem to perform just well you, we cannot see any voltage drop here under extreme high load i mean it's 100 160 amps we've got a 0.55c load here on these batteries and they're performing well this is probably far, far more than I ever would pull or push into the batteries in my solar storage situation. So I cannot see any major problem with these battery cells, even they look very random. They're coming from different manufacturer dates and they also have different capacities. Sorry guys for the sudden change in the scene here, but I had to go. Um, but talking about the capacity, this will be in the next video, we will do a massive capacity test on these battery cells here especially number five, six, seven, and eight, because I want to know if these capacities are actually matching and promise what I have paid for. 280 amp hours, right? And honestly, so far, we could not see any problems with these batteries. Internal resistance top matches even under high load. And you could see the voltage is holding under 160 amps with these battery cells. No issues. But still, number six was always low. And I doubt it was the bus bar connection or the stripped, the half stripped terminal we had. There must be something else. So the very, very obvious cause for such a behavior to be always high, or always low is a different capacity, right? And I have already started doing a capacity measurement here with the Chinese cracker and we are measuring number six, number five, six, seven and eight. And then we will see and we'll have a final verdict on this delivery from Shenzhen Basin two years ago, which should have been four years ago. All right, guys. So far, this video from tonight, as always, thank you so much for watching. Thanks for all your support. Thanks for all these. It is still freezing cold outside. It just stopped raining after like two days non-stop raining here. It is totally crazy. And until the next video here on the channel, guys, you stay charged, stay safe. And thanks again for watching. See you then. Bye bye. <laughs> we are in the deep red area. <laughs> the battery is on 8%. We are done. We are done. It is so cool. <laughs>